Okay, so welcome back to this part four of the bioinformatics from scratch series, where I show you how to do a bioinformatics project using machine learning in a step-by-step -step manner. So in this video, we're going to build a simple regression model based on the random forest algorithm. And the data set that we're using is based on the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, which is derived from the previous tutorial videos. And so without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to the GitHub of the data professor, and then you want to click on the code link and then click on Python. And then you want to find CDDML part four. And so if you haven't yet gone through the previous three episodes here, please make sure to go through that in the provided playlist up and below. And so you want to click on the part four and then right click on the raw link and then save link as and then save it into your computer. All right, so let's get started. So let's connect to the Google Colab. All right, so for those of you new here, you could open the notebook directly by clicking on the open notebook, click on GitHub, and then you type in data professor, and then find CDD ML part four right here. And then you click on that one. Okay, so I'm gonna use the one provided here. So let's begin. So the first block of code here is to import the necessary libraries. So we're going to simply run that. And then we're going to load in the data set that we have prepared from the prior videos. So we're going to load it in. And so the data set here is based on the PubChem fingerprint. And it's going to contain the bioactivity data for the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. So one of you asked a very great question. In the prior video, in part three, we have prepared a PopCam fingerprint. And then in part two, we have prepared Lipinski descriptors. And then the question was, what's the difference between these two? So that's a very great question. So firstly, the Lipinski descriptor will provide us with a set of simple molecular descriptors that essentially will be giving us a quick overview of the drug-like properties of the molecule. And so historically, Christopher Lipinski created a set of four descriptors that he had investigated in his research that are responsible for drug-like properties, whereby he analyzed a set of orally active drugs. And then he came up with this rule of five, whereby compounds that are passing the rule of five will make good oral drugs. And so for the PubChem fingerprint, which we will be using today as well for the model building, it is describing the local features of the molecules. So the Lipinski descriptor will be describing the global features of the molecule, particularly the molecular size of the molecule, the solubility of the molecule, and also the number of hydrogen bond donor and acceptor, which is the propensity to accept and donate hydrogen bonds. And by local features for the PubChem, I mean that each molecule will be described by the unique building blocks of the molecule. So if we think of molecules as kind of like a Lego building blocks, so each molecule will be comprised of several Lego building blocks. And the way at which the Lego building blocks are connected, it will create a unique properties for the drug. And that is the essence of drug discovery and also the essence of drug design. So essentially, the connectivity of the Lego blocks are giving rise to the unique structure of the molecule and also the unique molecular properties. And so therefore, we have to find a way to rearrange the Lego building block in such a way that the molecule provides the most potency toward the target protein that it wants to interact while also being safe and not so toxic. All right, because if the molecule is toxic, then you have side effects happening. All right, so we have already downloaded the data set now. And so let's have a look at the input features. So the PopCam fingerprint has 881 input features. So let's think of the input features for the PopCam fingerprint as kind of like a unique, as the name implies, fingerprint. So each molecule will be given a unique fingerprint, kind of like each of us humans have a unique fingerprint, right? And so the unique fingerprint of each molecule will allow the machine learning algorithm to learn from the unique properties in terms of the molecular properties of the compound, and then create a model that will be able 
able to distinguish between compounds that are active compounds that are inactive right because this is the goal of our model building we want to see which functional group or fingerprints are essential for designing a good drug or a potent drug and so the target variable that we are using for our prediction is called PIC50 which is the minus negative logarithm of the IC50 value IC50 is the inhibition concentration at 50% Okay, so let's have a look further in 3.1, the input features. So notice that, okay, let me increase the font size. It might be a bit too small here. Okay, there you go. So for those of you who are using mobile phones to look at this video, so I'm going to increase the font size. So let's continue. So the input feature here, x equals to df dot drop. So we're going to drop the PIC50 in order to create the x variable matrix. Okay, let's see. So the df here is reading in the downloaded data set file which is comprised of the fingerprint and the PIC50 value okay so it's in a DF data frame okay so in order to create the input features we're going to drop the PIC50 column because the PIC50 column will be used as the Y variable so upon dropping the PIC50 we will have only the popcam fingerprint and so we will call this X and then for Y we're going to use DF.PIC50 okay so let's run the blocks of code here Oh, okay, I have to run the top one here first. All right, and then run the X. All right, run the Y. All right, so X and Y are loaded in, and then we're going to have a look at the shape of the data. So we have 4,695 rows or compounds, and we have 888, and then we have 881 PopCam fingerprints. So here we're going to remove the low variance features, and then we're going to have a look. So we have 137 fingerprints left, which is from the 881. So variables having low variance will be removed. And then we're going to split the data in a 80-20 fashion. And then we're going to look at the data dimension again. All right, so let's build a simple regression model using random forest. And so we're going to use n estimator to be 100. And then upon building the model, we get about 0 0.50. All right, so we did not set the seed number. So it is varying over time because of the random features that it is taking to build the model. All right, so why don't we set seed here? Okay, so let's set the seed number. Import numpy as np. And then let's build the model. 512, let's run it again. 512, try again. All right, so you see that if we don't set the seed number, the seed number will be randomized and then we get different results. So here we're setting the seed to 100 and we're getting the same results. So let's make the prediction. And now here in this block of code, we're going to make a scatter plot of the experimental versus the predicted PIC50 values. And then here you go. We have a scatter plot of experimental and predicted. All right. So if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet done so. Hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.